Today we're going to look at 10, 15, and 24 frame rates. All right. Brickology. Wondering what frame rate you should shoot in and what kind of difference it can make? I'll show you the difference between 10, 15, and 24 frame rates. I shot the same car scene in each of these frame rates, and in this video, I'll break down each one frame by frame so you can see and get an idea of how I did it. Then at the end, I'll discuss what I think is the best frame rate to shoot it. If you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. It'll help me grow this channel and bring you more stop motion tutorials just like this. All right, let's get started. First, let's see each of these scenes. Each one is two seconds long, and I tried to make them with all the same movements and timing. All right, here we are in dragon frame. We're looking at the 10 frames per second car scene. And down here, if you notice where my mouse is, it says 10 FPS. Let's play it a couple times and see what it looks like. Oh, not bad. And there we go. Now, if you notice here, there's this yellow line here, but this is actually where I stopped shooting. So this is 10 frames per second. I stopped shooting at 20 frames, so this is two seconds long. This yellow line that you're gonna see is just me holding this picture at the end for 10 more frames, just so that um, you know there's something to freeze the, the picture at or else the loop will be too fast. So let's play it one more time and then break it down. Now, if you think about it, we're at 10 frames per second, so I want it to get to do all that stuff in two seconds each one of these movements is going to be larger than you would see uh, in 15 and 24 frame rates. So if you notice, if I go, look at how big this jump is for the car. That's a pretty big jump. But then at the end here, the movements will still get a little bit smaller because the car is slowing down in the skid here, then picking up speed to get this little turn then picking up a little bit of speed to get the stop. All right, so let's see how long it takes the car to hit the middle. Right here in the middle, it took me five frames. All right, so keep that in mind. Five frames to hit the middle of the picture here. Then all the rest is just this last movement. Okay? So keep in mind, with 10 frames per second, you're going to need to do bigger movements or else... If each of these moves were small, the car would be moving, in my opinion, the car would be moving too slow to merit such a big skid like that. And we'll see with the other frame rates. I'll play the other frame rates at a lower frame rate so that you can see, okay, that would be too slow. I mean, that still looks like the car has acceleration, deceleration, excuse me, and a little bit of skid there. Kind of like that one. So this is 10 frames per second. This is 15 frames per second. Let's play and take a look. Oh, oh, not bad. All right, one more time. Now, what I like about this is there's still a sense of speed and power and torque going into this turn right here, the skid. I like that, then he squares out the car. So breaking it down frame by frame. Now you notice the movements are still pretty big because I still want a sense of speed like I was talking about speed and power especially when a car goes into a skid you want to make sure there's a sense of speed and power going into that turn and right here he I even do one frame where he just completely stops because that's what a car would do it would have to come to a full stop in order to make a turn or a 180 degree turn so there's a stop and there's him Putting the car straight again. Let's do it again. Now let's see how many frames it takes him to hit the middle. And when it's 10 frames per second, it took five frames. So 15 frames per second took six frames. That kind of proportionately makes sense, I think. Those of you mathematicians tell me if that's correct. Maybe it should have been seven or eight, I don't know. But I wanted that speed going into this turn. And, and the real animation, I'll tell you, comes in the hardest part for me was coming in this turn right here the skid and the turn so I want to make sure I had enough time to make that look good let's do it one more time and then notice here the movements are going to get smaller 
Again, smaller and smaller. It doesn't matter what frame rate you're working in. The movements still get smaller and smaller as you decelerate. And they get bigger and bigger, conversely, when you accelerate. All right, now let's play this at 10 frames per second. Here we go. Still looks pretty good. Still looks pretty good, but because I took more pictures, it looks a little bit more choppy. And just not as much power going into that skid. So it just doesn't have the same speed and power going into it. And of course, if we play this at 24 frames, this will just go by too fast. Whoa, you know, I, that's, that's just unrealistic. If he's going that fast and he has to make a break, he would fly off of, he would fly off of this base plate so fast. Let's do 12 frames per second to see what this looks like, curious. Hmm, that looks pretty good too, but again, it doesn't look at it with 15 frames. It just doesn't have the same power. That looks just slightly, it's slight, but it just, it's very subtle, but it just looks so much more powerful going into that skid and that turn. All right, now here we are at 24 frames per second. Take a look down here, 24 FPS. And if you look at the pictures here, I have taken 48. That's two seconds long. And again, the yellow is just holding it for one more second. All right, so this yellow doesn't mean I took these many, this many pictures. It's just sitting at the end so that the loop doesn't go too fast. Let's play it and see what it looks like. Oh, very nice. One more time. All right. So let's break this one down step by step. You know, if you, you're gonna notice that the car will do smaller movements, see how small these movements are compared to the other frame rates. And for it to hit the middle, it took 12 frames to hit the middle of the screen, All right? And he's starting to do the skid and each of, look how small the movements are there. Then there's the acceleration again and then him squaring out the car. All right, let's do that again. So just take a look at how small the movements are. So for me, you know, I don't have the time to do all of this with every single shot that I make. It looks great though, but I just don't have the time to do all that. All right, let's do it again. And Hopefully, I had made it pretty even with the spacing. All right. So that is how I broke down every single one of these car runs. Let's do it again. Full speed. Okay. And now let's take this and put it down to 15 frames per second. And you'll see a big difference on how it moves. It still looks pretty good, but it just does... does just doesn't have the power in that skid you know just kind of looks like he's kind of like meh I just kind of turn to me it doesn't look as powerful and here's the same thing at 10 frames per second and there you can really see the choppiness and the breakdown of each frame so again so with that many pictures 24 is where it looks the best. See that, it just looks like there's so much power going into that skid. So which frame rate is best? Well, in my opinion, choose the frame rate that best suits your workflow and time. I chose 15 because it's where I'm most comfortable. I can be pretty quick with shooting and I don't feel like I have to sacrifice smoothness and animation. While 24 is awesome to look at, it's almost two times the work and I just don't have time for that. So whichever frame rate you choose, 10, 12, 15, 24, 30, make sure you understand how long it takes to not only shoot one second of video, but also how long it takes the object to complete a movement while looking pretty good. You know, I think all three examples in this video look pretty good, but for me, I choose 15 because I think it looks just as good as 24 without looking too choppy. And how do you get comfortable with your chosen frame rate? Practice your butt off. Watch this video for more advice on how to practice stop motion. See you there.